Thanks for staying with us in Bill O'Reilly in the What the Heck Just Happened segment tonight. President Obama giving back. He earns $400,000 a year, but will donate $20,000 of that to the federal government to pay for stuff. So let's see. $17 trillion debt minus $20,000. Here now. Greg Gutfeld and Bernard McGurk. Gutfeld, you were out of control on that show you were on five. Yeah. I thought Dana Perino was going to leave the set. I, uh, I had she... a little too much coffee. And, wow. Uh, yeah, you were a bit all of a over the place. I'd like to apologize to America. Yeah, you should. No, America Ferrara, the actress. Okay. Not really. <laughs> no idea who that is. Wasn't she in some sitcom? <laughs> or yes. Some ugly Betty. Yes. Okay. All right. So, the president making a symbolic gesture. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, it's beautiful. Is it? It's he truly cares about America. You know what he's you know what he's like? He's like that drunk stockbroker who throws five bucks at the homeless guy as he's walking into the Four Seasons restaurant. It was all symbolic, all substance to impress people, but ultimately it means nothing. Symbolism in his mind always beats substance. But he wants to give back. He wants and, and you know why this happened tax McGurk, because it happened because on this program we said, you know what? He's asking for shared sacrifice, but he ain't sacrificing, and that's why he's doing it. I oh, think. Yeah, of course, right. right. If he's feeling the pressure. That, that's actually the, the good part about it, but it's all simple. It's like your kid putting money in a piggy bank. Oh, that's so cute. It couldn't have been more insulting if they the White House released a photo of Obama in a tool belt, you know, vacuuming the Oval Office. <laughs> I mean, just stop spending so this, money. We the sequester don't cuts, and he's doing it himself. Yeah, right, right, right. Just stop okay. spending money. Everything from the stupid studies about duck okay. genitalia to, to fat. Right, this is going to this is going to shock you now. I think you guys are being way too rough on him. I think the twenty thousand. <laughs> I agree. It's symbolic. It doesn't really mean anything in the long run. But the fact that he did it, good. What's five percent of your salary, Bill? You couldn't add that high, Gutfeld. I mean, you'd have to need a calculator like that. You know, it puts Joe Biden, the notorious skinflint Joe Biden, on the spot. I'm sure he took time out from watching the Cartoon Network to talk to Jill about what they should do. Should they follow suit? You know, Biden and Gore before him, they don't give any money to charity. That's exactly my point. They never give money to charity. That's my point, exactly Cheney gave like $8 million to charity. Yep, it's a dilemma for him now. Okay, now, the Associated Press... And they love this show. I mean, they just can't say enough good <laughs> things about the fact. Um, they say now they are never again going to use the term illegal alien. All right. And Jay Leno had something to say about that. And in a groundbreaking move, the Associated Press, the largest news gathering outlet in the world, will no longer use the term illegal immigrant. That is out. No longer illegal immigrant. They will now use the phrase undocumented Democrat. That is the new <laughs> undocumented Democrat. You know, I, I think Miller knows this has got a great point because Absolutely. most of the undocumented, illegal, whatever you want to call them, folks who just wandered here, um, they will probably vote Democratic. Mm -hmm. All right. When my people came from Ireland, they voted Democratic. That's the history of the nation. And you say? Yep, yep. our people. And, and by the way, 46% uh, of Latinos in some polls they cite say they are offended by it, which tells me that more than half are not offended by the phrase illegal immigrant. And I have all the respect in the world for illegal immigrants, God-fearing, hard-working people. They made it to the promised land from utter destitution, but you're still here illegally. Well, right. I mean, I, I, Gutfeld, I was on uh, Geraldo's Dopey Radio Show. You mm. know that, right? Congratulations. You're welcome. <laughs> um, and, and we had this argument because Geraldo was demanding right. that I never use the word illegal alien again. And I'm saying, all right, Geraldo, here's the deal. You're insane, number one, and everybody <laughs> applauded, even his own staff. And then I said, number two, if you're a resident alien in the United States, that means you come with documentation. Right. They stamp your passport. They give right. you a card. That you're a resident alien. That's what they call them. Yeah. If you don't do that, you're an illegal alien. Mm -hmm. That is the legal term. That's a fact. But, they, but right. the, the left knows that if you change the language, you can change the rules. If you use the, this language, uh, drug dealers become unlicensed pharmacists. Yeah. Shoplifters are now non-paying customers. And it's not gay marriage. It's marriage equality. equality. It's it's not pro-abortion, it's pro-choice. No, no, no. It's reproductive rights. Oh, excuse me. Uh, see, I'm, I'm the bad you know, guy now. Gutfeld, you, you actually had a lucid observation. I yeah, mean, I'm on a new medication, and I think it's working. <laughs> Although, you look like a giant elephant. Yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We hope you don't overdose. Back in the book segment tonight, we continue with Bernard McGurk and Greg Gutfeld. Let's get right to the pinheads of the week. Gutfeld has selected an educator at Columbia University who hired radical weather underground killer. Kathy Bodine. As we reported last night, Ms. Bodine was convicted of murder during an armed, armored car robbery. She served 23 years in prison, was let out, and now she's going to teach at Columbia. 
I want to also talk about the people that are still in prison and not here and remember them. People, David Gilbert, Judy Clark, Sekou Adinga, Rosalind Smith, so many other people that aren't here, but I'm thinking of them, we want them here with us, and hopefully someday they will be. Yeah, I'd like the three people you murdered to be here too, you know what I mean? All right, Gutfeld, good selection. Thank this, you. This woman is off the chart. Yeah, I, a, let I, the Columbia University woman I, have I, I can go. barely talk about this. Uh, without, I am so infuriated. I mean, it's like Absolutely. she shouldn't be in Columbia. She should be in a cemetery. She was involved in making bombs that killed three of her cohorts that were meant for our troops at a dance with their wives and girlfriends. They tried to kill our troops. Awful. It's awful. All right, but you have to get back to the pinhead of the week. Associate Dean uh, Mariana, Mariana Yoshiaki. All right, put Mariana's picture up there. Now, this is the woman that made the decision to bring in Bodine, yeah. right? There she is. Just goes to show you All that right. with time, they, everybody forgets evil. They just let it, nobody reads anymore. I don't, I don't, I don't think everybody. they forget. I don't think they care. Yeah. I don't think they care. Well, but no, they don't care. You're absolutely right. right? They don't care, and it, it, it's disgusting, and, uh, you know, I, I don't know. If you... I mean, to hear this Bodine say, oh, well, there's some people who are still in jail. We really <laughs> wish they were here. <laughs> what about the three guys you killed? Only yes. 30 years ago, two dead cops and one dead security uh, guard. But they, wait, she... they were Vietnam War veterans, too. She right. was almost 40 when she did this. She wasn't a kid. Uh, it, uh, all right, I can't, I can't, I can't. Miss <laughs> Bodine better hope she doesn't run into me on the streets mm -hmm. of New York. All right, now, McGurk has selected Robert Redford, and this is interesting because there's a little parallel yeah. going on here. Go. When I was younger, I was very much aware of the movement. I was more than sympathetic. Even when you read about bombings? All of it. I knew that it was extreme, and I guess movements have to be extreme to some degree. No, yes. Unbelievable. Now, this movie is based on that woman, Boudin, and her boyfriend, who uh, uh, Redford plays. And that Stephanopoulos, by the way, I mean, he made uh, Mario Lopez look like Tim Russert. <laughs> that was as tough as he got. At one point, Redford said to him, you should be on the marketing team. It was disgusting. Now, Redford, for making this movie, glamorizing and celebrating cop killers, he is a spoiled... But you didn't see it yet. You didn't see the movie. It, I, read all, I read all about it. I read it, it too, but let's, let's just keep it in, in, in the Redford zone. Well, they say that he celebrates and romanticizes these well, uh, let's, cop I, I don't have time to see the stupid movie, and nobody else is going to see it. I'll predict it's going to be it's a got huge bad reviews. Bomb. Um, but I don't want to crucify the movie without seeing it. But Redford himself has a history. First, he was an environmentalist, and that's a good thing in Utah. You know, he bought up a lot of land, the Sundance thing, and all of that. But he, you know, he comes in and out of this thing. I don't think he likes his country. He made a movie. That's exactly right. He, he's a, a rich, spoiled, self-hating American, American. great punk right. is what but he is. He made a movie about Che Guevara. And by the way, these people that sympathize with the weather underground are the same people who spit on the returning servicemen from Vietnam. Yeah. They, That's that mentality that George Stephanopoulos loved so much with Robert. No, I don't know about Hol that, but go ahead, real quick. Hollywood has never met a thug it has it wouldn't have. A hug. left wing thug. Yes, they right. and, and they, Viva they, Che, biggest yes. one of the biggest maniacs, homicidal maniacs in history. All right, here's my pinhead of the week. Put this guy Dana Milbank up there, his picture up there. This is what kills me. Nobody knows. I know no, nobody knows him. Okay, but he's been writing at the Washington Post for years. All right, he's got a plum job there. And the guy just is incapable of telling the truth. Here's what he wrote about me this week. Fox News Channel has dropped Sarah Palin, and he's happy about that. Bill O'Reilly criticized opponents of same-sex marriage as Bible thumpers. No, I didn't. I didn't do anything close to that. What I said was, you don't use, you don't thump the Bible in debating the issue. I didn't criticize critics of gay marriage or categorize them as Bible thumpers. This guy is just a liar, yet he gets paid by the Washington Post to do this all the time. I am so furious. To perpetuate that lie, now, absolutely. What I want to do is put Bodine, <clears throat> Milbank, and Redford on a raft <laughs> and yeah. push it toward Cuba. <laughs> the three of us will go to Key West, <laughs> we'll get them on a raft, and the three of us will push it Mm. Yes. Right toward Cuba, and the current will take it. I'm not allowed in Key West anymore. But, uh, after... <laughs> you were at one time. Yeah, right a little, yeah. just a little. You're very popular there in Hemingway's home. Never trust a Dana. I... Oh, <laughs> oh, fire Perino! I'd sue you. I'd sue you so bad. I gotta go. All right, but it's good oh. to see you guys. No, it's really not. Nah, no, you're for lying. On anyway. <laughs>